Mail merge requires two documents. The first is a primary document created in Word that contains text that's used in every document, as well as instructions on where to insert variable text. Let's take a look at an existing document and decide what portions of the document would be used in every single version and what portions are variable. We have a letter that we're sending to Tabitha Castro. And normally what we might do is we'd go through the letter and we would erase some parts or use cut and paste in order to put in our variable information. I'm going to use the highlighting tool in Word to show you the parts that are variable as we go through the letter. You don't need to highlight them, but we do need to understand them. First, in each letter, we'll notice that it's addressed to a different person with their address. This is known as an address block. And so in each letter, it will be different. This is variable text. Next, we have a greeting line, and it says, Dear Tabitha. Now, in a letter to John Doe, it would say, Dear John. This is variable text, the name. But it's also true that if we don't have any name, for example, all we have is a company without a contact, we don't want that word dear to appear by itself, dear blank. You may have received bad form letters like that. The entire greeting line is actually variable because we don't want to see dear if we don't have a name. So I'm going to highlight that. As we scroll down, you'll also see that Tabitha's name is in the middle of this third paragraph. Thank you for agreeing to take a leadership role, Tabitha which makes it seem like she's the only person who's agreed to take a leadership role. It's kind of a nice place to personalize. It's almost invigorating. And then the sentence that follows is also variable text. It says, we want to make it even easier for out-of-state team members to participate and provide some additional information. This sentence won't appear in every letter. It will only appear in the letters for out-of-state participants. Notice that it doesn't say, if you're from out of state, it says, you have someone assigned to you because you are out of state. As we scroll through the rest of the letter, we'll find that we've caught all of the pieces that are variable. The address block, the greeting line, a call out using Tabitha's first name, and then a variable sentence to end that third paragraph. Now that we've identified these, we could remove all the highlighting if we wished, or we can simply leave it in place as we work with the letter. Eventually, all that yellow will need to be replaced and go away. I want to save this letter then, but first, I want to say, this is my merge letter. So I'm going to choose Start Mail Merge and choose Letter as my type. Nothing really changes. It's a subtle change, but Word now knows that this will be a merge letter, not simply a letter sent to Tabitha. And so when we choose Save As to save this letter, I'm going to begin it with the word merge so that I know that this is actually a primary document that I'm ready to use in Microsoft Word. Click Save, and now that we've identified the variable text and the constant text in our letter, we're ready to move on to the next step of word mail merge.